In this bubble tutorial video, I'd like to demonstrate how database triggers can be really helpful when dealing with first names and last names. Uh, I've got a repeating group here and I've got a list of contacts and I've got a first name field and a last name field. Uh, so if I was to update uh, this first name, say to Al Alfred, you can see that my label here updates. And that's because my label is simply uh, two dynamic values, my current sales contacts first name and my current sales contacts last name. But you might have a good reason in your app why you'd want to have the full name in your database. Um, and you could do that through a workflow when you modify it. Um, but database triggers basically mean that uh, you, you've got one less thing to worry about, one less chance that you'll miss keeping uh, data up to date uh, and in sync with one another. So let me demonstrate. Uh, to get to um, database triggers, you need to be on a paid bubble plan and have back in workflows enabled. And we can go in and general new database trigger event. And so let's say this is uh, update full name and contacts. And so what we're going to do is make changes to a thing. And database triggers give you access to the data before and after this trigger occurs. So we're going to make changes to the one after, and we're going to change the field of, uh, I'll just put in full name. And full name is going to be the contact after we've updated either the first name or the last name. Now you could use this contact or you could use contacts now, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, and we'll say first name. And we will also trim this uh, to remove any additional spaces that the user might leave after their name, otherwise we'd end up with a double space in the middle. Uh, we click there, we add a space of our own, and we go contacts now, last name, and we also trim trimmed that. Hey guys, if you're finding these YouTube tutorials helpful, we invite you to explore even more content on our website at planetnoco.com. We have a large selection and variety of super in-depth and detailed video lessons there, created and curated just for our paying members. It's all about learning together and accelerating your no-code journey. Check us out at www.planetnoco.com and let's continue building without limits. Um, now, with, with regards to workload units, we want to optimize this. Uh, and at the moment, this database trigger will run every single time anything changes uh, with a contact. Um, and I can limit that down. So I can say only when the contact before change uh, first name is not contact now first name or contact before last name is not contact now last name. So, you know, my contact could have 20 other fields. It could have email address. It could have option set fields in there. Uh, but I don't want to update full name every single time one of those fields changes. I'm limiting it now just to when either first name has changed or last name has changed. So let me update the labels in my app. Uh, so to instead say that's full name and refresh that. Okay, so at the moment they're empty because the database trigger has not been run. So maybe uh, you'll want to uh, consider saving it at some point, depending on when your database trigger runs, you might need to populate the full name value first. But you'll see that if I update this back to Bruce and click out, my full name is populated there as Bruce Wayne. Uh, and I can do the same uh, uh, for Tony, uh, so I could put in uh, Pepper. Okay, and the field is updated. Um, a couple of things to say about database triggers that's really worth being aware of. If I go back to uh, back end. So database triggers uh, run in the back end because they're a back end workflow. Um, they, uh, in my experience, when you run a lot of database triggers at the same time, say you've imported uh, a, a CSV file with 100 entries 
and uh, you're running a database trigger on each of those entries. In my experience, it can be a little bit iffy. It can fail. Uh, you, there's definitely an element of bubble queuing uh, the database triggers. It doesn't happen instantaneous on the front end. Um, so I'll just be aware of database triggers when you're handling large amounts of data and you're kind of pushing through, say, hundreds of entries in one go that all have a change like this going on. I'll just be aware of that. The other thing to mention with database triggers is that they, uh, they can't trigger each other. Um, so I couldn't now add in a database trigger that says when full name is changes, do this action because the full name change occurs in the database trigger. Having said that, uh, that would run if you updated full name uh, in a workflow elsewhere in your app. What I mean is that full name, the change to full name here is not going to trigger a database trigger that is looking for changes on the full name field. So there you have it. That is uh, a summary and an illustration of one helpful thing that you can do uh, and make use of database triggers. If you've got any questions about database triggers, uh, do leave a comment. If you've got any uh, requests for further videos, leave a comment also. Uh, we look and try and respond to every single one.